Uh, I, Mike Lowe, uh, I'm the architect for Jetstream 2. Uh, we've done some unusual things here in the, uh, in the networking. Um, so yeah, we'll just sort of dive right in. Uh, in your classic, uh, your classic topology, right? You got leaf spine, you've got a bunch of uh, links between the switches, the ISLs, because between the server and the spine, there is no way to uh, communicate a broken link, right? So you have to have redundancy all the way through. Uh, a way to get rid of that is going, is getting rid of all the layer two and using layer three, because layer three is you know, resilient, right? It was built to route around damage. So you can compare these pictures and, you know, the, the routed one is much cleaner, but way not, what may not be obvious uh, right off the bat is when you drop all the redundant uh, inner switch links, you also drop your cost, right? So in Jetstream 2, that works out to about 1% of the cost of the system, dropping those links, about 100 grand. Um, that, and I'm not sure that we could actually build it if we didn't do it this way. There just weren't enough, uh, there just wasn't enough room in the system as it was designed to, to actually fit all of the, uh, all the ISLs. So, uh, right. It's relatively simple, uh, conceptually. You use a routing daemon, you advertise to the switch, hey, I know how to get to this particular IP address, right? And the IP address is the host IP address. And through, uh, through some magic, you can advertise this IPv4 address over an IPv6 uh, to an IPv6 destination. And because of the way IPv6 was uh, constructed, there's always an IPv6 address called link local address that is automatically configured, always works, everything that does an IPv6 stack has this. So you have basically a zero configure, I can advertise v4 addresses to this magic address and it's done, right? This works great. It's, uh, it's called BGP unnumbered. It's, uh, it's relatively known in the networking world. Um, what's not usual is running a routing daemon on your host. This used to be a thing, right? Back in the, Back in the 70s with some of the IBM uh, topologies before TCP, TCP IP, they would run routing daemons and route everywhere. So this is really kind of a, a return to the past. Uh, let's see, is there a good example here? I'm winging this a little bit. Uh, all right, let's look at a let's look at a live system. What are my compute nodes? Uh, is this readable? Oh, could you bump it up a little bit, please, yeah. Mike? Okay. Okay. Is that readable? I think that'll just about do it. Yep. Okay. So you know we've got a RFC nineteen eighteen address here, right? And it's a slash thirty two. What we've done. is we have constructed a router with a routing daemon and we have told it that if you have a if you have a IP address connected directly to the box say like on loop back there then go ahead and advertise that uh, through through BGP right and then we'll get to this later but this is also another important line this is redistribute any routes that you happen to know about from a static kernel route. Okay. Uh, right. So this guy's address 101, right? Hop off to another host. We find that guy has been advertised over BGP by uh, the two redundant links over 
IPv6 link local addresses. Okay, one for one for each interface on the machine. Okay, so we build the whole fabric. All the compute nodes are all plugged together. They're all advertising their addresses. Works beautifully. Okay, so uh, we're going to switch gears a bit. Uh, due to lack of imagination, I think, we have this restriction, right? If you use DDR, they say, and it's not true, that, uh, that every compute node will have to have a, a routable IP address. You'll consume one from your, from your public pool for every compute node. And I wasn't willing to accept that, right? Uh, so you have a topology in the compute node that looks in the network node that looks like this. And it's a bit crazy, right? But the important parts are when you use DDR, you have two namespaces. You get one for the router and you have this floating IP namespace. Okay. When you assign a floating IP, the traffic winds its way from the instance through, uh, through the bridge and through, oh, um, through OpenV switch into the router over to the floating IP namespace where the NAT happens and it goes back through OBS and winds its way back out through your provider bridge. So uh, the lack of imagination is real is not realizing that this works both directions. So all you have to do is make sure that all the all the IP traffic for a floating IP knows how to get back through this provider bridge. And as I pointed out before, uh, we are publishing routes to the kernel that we know about. So on this compute node, we have a, we have a static route, just IP route add, pointing it to the provider bridge. And we use the IP address as the destination um, that belongs to this floating IP namespace. Okay, so that will get traffic directly out of the compute node, as is normal for for DDR, and we'll also return it right back into it. So you don't have to use the network node as your ingress. Right, that gets you that gets you full bandwidth from your entire cluster. Uh, one of the tricks to doing this is using these uh, neutron service subnets, right? So you can you can take a uh, a subnet belonging to a neutron network and tag it. You tag it with its purpose, and then IP addresses. Uh, Will only uh, will only get pulled from this um, from this subnet if they match this purpose. So you can say, I want this subnet to take my floating IPs. I want the floating IP agent gateway to come from a different subnet. Now that subnet doesn't actually have to be routable, which the documentation would lead you to believe otherwise. So that makes this not true, right? You can have non-routable IP addresses in a special subnet that you've tagged with its purpose. So you don't consume any of your, uh, any of your publicly routable IP addresses, which I know is particularly important for uh, people who are not as uh, fortunate with their IP address space, right? So in order to make this happen, you just need a simple, mm, what is it, four line patch. All we actually have to do is when you're uh, when you're associating a floating IP, you uh, you just need to add a kernel route for it, and when it goes away, you remove it. Right. So uh, if we were to 
disassociate this floating IP. Yeah, oh, it's gone. You can no longer ping this address from the world. But if we were to yeah, find this again, associate a floating IP. We now have the route back, uh, static route back in the kernel on the compute node. And we will find on another node that address is published over BGP and therefore is accessible to the world. So, uh, Two line patch, don't believe the docs, and use the service networks, and you can get full, uh, the full aggregate bandwidth of all your compute nodes to all of your instances. And that's it.